didn't know no better. I had little enough sense to think that most of the folks out there who were homeless, they did something wrong to get there. Mm -hmm. See, you, you, we, 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 that judging thing just don't never work. <laughs> I thought it was alcoholics, they was drug addicts, they didn't want to work. I had little enough sense to believe that. When I got out there and I found something altogether different, I found out that most of them had a job, but it just didn't pay a living wage. I found out that most of them got out there because uh, uh, their husband or their wife divorced them and, you know, whatever goes on in the middle of that. Or they had a medical condition that was prolonged. You know, or somebody fired them off of a job. Mm -hmm. But they was working. It wasn't nothing like what I thought. Mm -hmm. But the one thing that they did that really bothered me was they hadn't done nothing wrong. But because they were homeless, they acted ashamed. They felt ashamed. Mm -hmm. And you know, shame, partner in crime, is guilt. Mm -hmm. So when they were acting ashamed, then guilt just came along for the ride. Amen. And I was like, oh, no, 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 no. I ain't been at shame of nothing. I was sick. I almost died. God saved my life. And I'm going to be ashamed that I was homeless. As a result of that, I don't think so. I wasn't going to do no shame and guilt. But they just had a hard time. Being homeless is not an easy experience. But I wasn't afraid. I wasn't ashamed. I just refused to be. Now, I also mentioned on my list Peter. Remember? Mm -hmm. Peter warned himself by the fight mm -hmm. after he had denied Christ three times. <clears throat> it's one thing to be close to the fire. Mm -hmm. And it's another thing to be in the fire. Mm -hmm. You can be close to the fire like Peter was, mm -hmm. and you can deny God. Mm -hmm. You can go and deny him. Mm -hmm. And like I told you, if you put a few cuss words in there, mm -hmm. they'll believe you. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's a lot of what's wrong these days. We look too much like them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We act too much like, like okay. them. So when people encounter us, they don't really know that they are encountering heaven. Yeah. The Bible said when we come up to somebody or come into the midst of somebody, they ought to know that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's the way it's supposed to be. But he ain't going to send you up in somebody's all nice, clean church where they done labor to clean it up. He going to send you into a mess. He going to send you into some darkness. Because you're supposed to be the light. He's going to send you someplace where people need you. Where you're supposed to go up in there like the kingdom of heaven is in hand. What you want me to do, Lord? What y'all folks need up in there? Even if you don't say it out loud, that's what you're supposed to be doing. <clears throat> it's what God needs for you to do. Up in there. <clears throat> and that's the way we're going to have to roll with this fire. Because if we are just close to the fire, it ain't going to change nothing in our lives. We're going to have to go in the fire. Like the, the Hebrew boys. Because one of the things was that uh, before they were thrown into the fiery furnace, Daniel had gotten the king to put them over some areas in the kingdom. They had some positions of leadership in the kingdom before they went into the fiery furnace. Well, after they came out of the fiery furnace, they were promoted. They got promoted, and not only did they get promoted, but then Nebuchadnezzar said, and 
any of y'all who disrespect their God or say anything against their God going to be in trouble with me because their God is the God. So not only did they get promoted, but the God that they served had was exalted. You go. Was exalted. And that's what's going to happen when we get it right. That's what's going to happen when we get it right. We're going to come out of the fire. Yes, God. Yes, God. On fire. Amen. And ready to go forth into the new thing. Yes, yes. The third thing is that we have to accept that fire is God's way of doing things. That's it. That's his way of doing things. You need, you need to prove it to yourself. He need to let the devil see that you are ready. That you, that you can handle the job. Yeah, I like what Prophet said when she said, well, you know, that's the Lord they are bragging on you. When you're in the fire, that's the Lord bragging on you. When, when, when the devil, you know, uh, uh, go before him and he said he had been running to and fro, seeking, you know, y'all know the Bible says. But he was bragging on Job. So the only reason why you in the fire is because God was bragging on you. That's a big deal. And when you take it that way, it changes everything. So accept that fire is God's way. And just understand that God gonna deal with it. God gonna deal with it. If you do not accept the fact that fire is God's way of proving us and pros uh, uh, processing us and preparing us, then we will abort our destiny. Yes. The baby won't come forth. Mm -hmm. If we don't accept God's way, because he is the dead. He the baby dead. Now who the daddy of your baby? My baby daddy is God. And that's what your baby daddy better be too. Better be God. If we do not accept the fact that Fire is God's way, we will abort. If we do accept the fact that fire is God's way, it accelerates our movement into our destiny. Okay? If we do accept, then we have access to the kingdom of heaven in the earth realm. Now, I, I want y'all to, to, to hear that. Did y'all get that? If we accept that the fire is God's way, then that opens up to us the kingdom of heaven in the earth realm. Not just when Jesus comes back, but now faith is. Yes. Now. Now. God said, Jesus said, don't go out there looking and don't go over there looking and don't run. The kingdom is within us. So if you want to experience why God placed the kingdom in us. If you want to experience the kingdom of heaven in the earth realm, then just accept that fire is God's way. And when we accept that, then we have amazing assurance of what's going on between us and God. We have amazing assurance of where he's taken us to. We have amazing assurance of what he's doing in our lives. We have amazing assurance that he's not going to let our daughter die in the street. We have amazing assurance that there's nothing that the devil can show up and bring up in our life that God is not going to handle. God knew about it already anyway. He 
they have amazing assurance yes, yes. about everything in our life. All we got to do is talk to God about it. Okay. He'll tell you what's on the schedule. He'll tell you what's on the assignment. Amazing assurance. I knew from the day, the first day, that they rushed me to the emergency room. I told everybody around me, this ain't nothing but the devil trying to block my destiny. But I ain't going nowhere until I finish what God sent me to do. And I got sense enough to know that if that is my commitment, and if that I have surrendered my life to God in that way, that God ain't fit to let the devil take me My out. God, my God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amazing assurance. I'm telling you, I know what I know. And I'm going to outlast the devil. Sometimes you just have, have to outlast. Because the only thing that is eternal... The only thing that is eternal yes. is God. Yes. Yes. Not even the devil is eternal uh -huh. it, around us. He get uh uh no no no. <laughs> Glory to God. That means this stuff got to come to an end. Yes. All right now. So we just gonna last, and I just gonna hang out over here with God and write my book that God told me to write yes. until God tell me the answer. Yeah, Jesus. Uh huh. Mm, we also have amazing. Yeah. Which one will do first, Lord? Mm, okay. <laughs> we also have amazing abundance. We might not have no million dollars in our bank account, but anything God wants us to do, we can do it. We ain't miss no meals, as Pastor say. And I. Uh, you know, I ain't, I ain't had to eat too many that wasn't what I want. <laughs> the only reason why I've been eating something that ain't what I want is because I need to eat better than I was. <laughs> you know, but pretty much I eat what I want. He takes care of us. His way is not the world's way. I had this um, vision in 1989. And in 1989, I was dying. I had gotten down to 100 pounds. Doctors didn't know what was wrong. God told me what to do. And once I could convince the doctors to do it, I was fine. But uh, while I was uh, ill, and what I mean by ill was that I was facing death. And I couldn't do uh, I couldn't go to the bathroom by myself. I couldn't roll over in bed. Nothing. I, I just, it was awful. But God showed me this vision during that time. And in the vision, I was in a war-torn land. There were no colors, only uh, browns and grays and tans and, you know, war-torn. <clears throat> And I was hiding behind this big rock. Y'all know that rock is Jesus, right? I was hiding behind this big rock. I was like, thank you, Lord. <laughs> and I was peeping out there to see what was going on on the battle. And while I'm peeping out there, the Lord said, there will be no buying and selling during the end times. I said, God, I read that in your word. But if we ain't going to be buying and selling, what we going to be doing? And the Lord said, you're going to be given. Wow. And then he pointed this big thing at me, and he said, and you will be going behind enemy lines carrying supplies. Mm -hmm. Well, I reckon the devil do want to kill me. <laughs> but he can't do it. Because yeah. God got this. Yeah. But if we're going to be given, y'all, that means you got something. Yes, you got something to give. Amen. How right, can God expect for us to live by giving if He didn't give you something to give? All right, Ain't Amen. stupid. All right. <laughs> he done gave us something to give. It's in your belly. Yes. 
is in your destiny. Mm. Amen? Amen? And then the last one is when we accept and, and, and the, the kingdom of heaven becomes open unto us in the earth realm, then we have amazing authority. Uh -huh. And when we go someplace, and we know it in our heart and in our mind that God sent us in there for a reason. We know it. That when we walk into that place that the kingdom of heaven just showed up in those people's lives. Then what he means by amazing authority is you go up in there breaking yokes. You take the light up in there and the yes, darkness yes. flees. Please. Because the darkness cannot extinguish the light. That's what he's expecting for us to do. That's why we gotta birth some babies up in here. Got to birth some babies. We got to have that new thing. Because we are preparing the way for the Lord. When you come out of the fire, you will be elevated. God will do miracles through you. You will no longer be afraid of the fire. Hear me, hear me, hear me. You will no longer be afraid of the fire. You got to reach and grab it. You got to believe it. Yes, it's going to be the same old troubles, but you got to look at it a different way. If you can uh, uh, allow yourself to see it a different way, God will change it for you. It'll be everything it's supposed to be. Can't be afraid, can't be ashamed. You can carry the gospel with life-changing results. And I don't mean that everybody's no preacher. You ain't got to be no preacher. You can be a business person. You got a business, then when, 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 when the chips are down, you can give what you want to. You can exchange your giving for what somebody else got. Yes, yes. So it ain't always about being in a pulpit. Yeah. You know, you can write a book, you can sing a song, you can do like Sister Yomi. Go up in there and take people back. Yeah. Yeah. My God. Take them back. Yes, yes, Reconnect yes. them. Yeah. You know, I, I went to the restroom before she came in and, and I was watching her. And I came back in and sat down. She was sitting back there in character. Yes. The whole time she was sitting back there, mm -hmm. she did not come out of her character. Amen. Sure she did. And that's the way we got to be. Wow. When we walk up in some place, yeah, God. we got to remember when the folks go to acting crazy and it's looking all bad up in there. And Lord, why you send me up in here in this mess? We got to remember we ain't afraid of the fire. We're not ashamed of the fire. And we have accepted. That fire is God's way. Yeah. Fire, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, Jesus. Rabbi Shatta. That's one of the things that I liked about Elijah. Elijah got good at that fire thing. Yeah. Call down fire on Mount Carmel. Yeah. And then when they sent somebody, call down fire on the captain and the fifth. Send them again, call down fire on the captain. The next one, plead for them. Listen, prophet, we ain't going to come. The only reason why we opened your face is because the king made us do it. Please spare our life, prophet. That's what he said. He got the life in that fire thing. And he got good at calling it down. We can get good at, oh, that's the fire. Y'all know how, they, how them folk, I don't know nothing about what them folk, how they be doing, I, I ain't finna do it, God ain't told me to do it. They be taking off their shoes and walking on hot coals to, yeah. to do something. I don't know what they something is they be trying to do, okay? But we gonna say, oh, that's the fire. Uh -huh. Call down the fire of God in the name of Jesus. And if it ain't gone in three hours, three days, or three something, uh, I just wait till the fire of God finish burning up. Then we're going to see for real what you mean. Amen. All right now. You said this and you said that. 
but it ain't feeling right to me. Right. Let me get some fire mm -hmm. on this perspective. Yeah. Lord God, burn away so I can see, uncover yeah. what is covered. Yeah. Let me know exactly what's going on yeah. up in here. Mm -hmm. That's what the fire of God All right do. now. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you got to decide yeah. when the fire shows up and knocks on your door, mm -hmm. how you going to operate. Are you going to be scared? Are you going to be ashamed? Are you going to accept that this is God's way? Are you going to accept that you can change the whole way you've been doing things? You can be somebody totally new. You can do something totally di different. You, What's your choice? That's it. Make your choice. Amen. Make your choice. Yes, God. Yes, Because see, fire has its benefits. Mm -hmm. Like I said, they got promoted. Mm -hmm. They got promoted. Mm -hmm. And they were already in a position of strength. Yeah. They were already in a position of leadership. But when they came out of the fire, they got promoted. And their God was exalted. Okay? God said, y'all, really? Here's what I want you to do. I want you to get comfortable in the chair. And this is what's getting ready to happen. How many of y'all know that things happen in the spirit realm before they can manifest in the physical realm? How many of y'all know that? Okay. So what is going to happen is you're going to put your mind stayed on Jesus. You're going to think about what you think you know about God's call on your life. <clears throat> You're going to think about what you feel your destiny is all about. And God has probably shown you bits and pieces at least of your destiny. And God's going to allow you to get a glimpse. Okay? He's, he's going to take you up and let you look over in. Are you ready? Now, like I said, you done had plenty of time to answer all these questions I was asking you. So if you don't want to come out and you don't want to be on fire and you don't want to go in to a new place, don't even go up. Thank you, Lord. Okay? And, it, and it's fine. Ain't nobody gonna point no fingers at you. Ain't nobody gonna judge you. Because, baby, this is a one-on-one -on -one between you and God. Amen. That's what life is all about. I will not be out there in that boat with you when the storm starts. Amen. You can call on me and I'm gonna be in Durham, North Carolina. <laughs> But you can call on Jesus and he's right there with you. Amen. So this is what we're hooking ourselves up with. The vision that God has for your life. You understand that? Now you need to use your imagination to picture it. But God will give you a glance. God gave you imagination. You just don't supposed to be using it for vain stuff. You don't supposed to be using it to conjure up some something you ain't got. Well, I said, that man sure look good. That ain't what your imagination supposed to be for. This thing about being with some somebody else like that. Your imagination is supposed to produce for the Lord, not produce evil or not produce at all. God gave you that imagination, and now we're gonna see a little bit about what is. Therefore, <clears throat> are you a little more comfortable in, ch in your chairs? <laughs> See, because when you get a picture, it builds your faith. Amen. When you get a picture, it, 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 you know, it helps you go through the fire different and better. You know, Jesus saw us saved, delivered, no more slave, 
to the things of the enemy. He saw himself reproduced over in you and over in you and there said of Jesus and there said of Jesus and there everyone, everywhere he looked was a Jesus. That's what he saw when he was carrying that crown. That's what he saw when they were beating him. He saw beyond the cross and that helped him do it. And it's going to be the same thing for you. Having a glimpse of where he's taking you to is going to help you do some of the things that you need to do to get there. Does that make sense to you? All right. Are you very comfortable? Okay, I want you to close your eyes. Close your eyes. And just allow yourself to just breathe. Just breathe. What? Leave all the work up to God. Just breathe. 